Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and in this video here I'm going to be talking about the best back floor to farm in the Sun and Moon Temple for abs in Dark Cloud. So this floor is going to be layer, well, level 17, the final floor of the Sun and Moon Temple that has enemies on it. There's one floor below this where, where the boss is, but this is the last one with actual, you know, enemies. All of the enemies in the back floor of level 17 are going to be blue dragon enemies. So they're going to be, um, quite a beefy version enemy and you're going to want to probably use a ranged attacker like I use Ruby or uh, Xiao Xiao however it's pronounced I know it's the word for cat so see how we got uh, his health down to barely anything. I'm switching to Goro because I want to level up his battle axe. This is what you want to do if you're going to level up a character here that uses a melee weapon. Ideally, you want to take out the enemy using your ranged character and then finish him off with your melee weapon using. I assume these enemies are weak to fire. Let's see. So about like 40 a hit, let's... My fire attribute is on par with that. So it does marginally more, yeah. So they're weak to fire. I would assume at least. Let's see what uh, lightning does. Thunder is a lot lower, so might do even less. Yeah, it does even less. So let's stick with fire. Your mileage may vary, though. They are immune to ice, obviously, considering they're like ice dragons. So keep that in mind. I might end up killing it. Nope. So we're good. Let's switch to Goro. They give 24 abs a kill here, which is uh, the same as you get per kill in the Wise Owl Forest on floor 10 when you hunt the werewolf enemies there. And it's the same abs per kill that you get hunting the Mask of Parajna's if I'm not mistaken, I think they give 24 as well in Shipwreck on floor 14. Those are the two areas you can level up uh, in the dungeons prior to this one. Let's see what I still need. More beasts. As far as affording attachments and stuff like that for your weapons, I would recommend the gold trick in this game if you're unfamiliar with the gold trick. It's essentially build up up to 30k gold and then keep running a dungeon until you find one of those little circle rings on the ground that increases your um, funds by a little it says, but it actually doubles your funds. got me right in the face. I'm not really interested in the like uh, gold that the thing that these enemies drop. They always drop like 20 gold. Most enemies in this game drop a insignificant amount of gold. The gold bags are kind of useless and pointless. What? That should not have hit me. this love when they get hit by stop it's so cute oh well we accidentally killed it one thing that's worth mentioning too is if you uh, have a good weapon and you want to lo level up a weaker weapon you can always switch to that weapon before the enemy dies after you kill score the killing blow with this weapon you can switch to another weapon and then give it the abs you can't do that with characters though see watch I'll show you here I guess let's see Let's see what... So we'll equip this. And as you can see, we got all of the abs for it. And yes, these enemies do give 20, 24 abs a kill. As we've seen with that weapon. As previously stated, you can't do that with... Um, I'm actually going to skip that one enemy up there. There's only one up there and it's way out of the way for 24 abs. One thing that's worth mentioning is you can um, reset the floors as much as you want. You, when I leave this floor and then come back, all of the enemies will respawn. 
So we're able to do the same back floor multiple times without having to keep using back floor items that allow us to access these floors. You are if you do have a weapon with Goro's abs up um, skill ability thing that will give you 28 abs per kill instead of 24 which is like a very marginal improvement in my honest opinion it's not that exciting I thought it was going to be more exciting so let's see now that this is oh boy as you can see we have like almost no I think, I think it requires, okay, Mimic and Beast. We'll do, uh, or it wasn't Mimic and Beast, I think it was Mimic and Dragon. That'll be the next one. These enemies are dragons too, so the more anti-dragon you have on a weapon, the more damage you'll do to them. So this, the main reason that you don't see this floor mentioned too much in any guides, except for the one that I'm writing for my website, is because uh, the blue dragons are a little bit annoying to fight. I'm actually not going to use Goro because if he dies, then that's no way. These guys, like for a melee user, they are very annoying to fight because you getting close to them is very, very tedious. That's why I usually lower their health down until they have one hit to go, and then I'll run in with the melee guy, if I'm going to be leveling up a melee guy. At some point, I'll have to level up Ungaga's weapon. I've been waiting I've been waiting for an actual weapon for Ungaga, but I've not been uh, lucky enough to find one. One thing that, well, actually there's two here, so I'll eliminate one. One other thing that is worth mentioning is uh, I recommend unlocking the final dungeon as not the demon shaft, but the, the dungeon before that, the gallery of time, the final dungeon in the story of this game, uh, rather quickly. And then doing a lot of your grinding because you can buy gems from the fairy king. And that includes gems like diamonds, which are very, very, very useful for leveling up your weapons because uh, gems give you insanely good bonuses, which are much more than the very crappy plus three attachments that you can get throughout the game. Um, if you're only ever using plus three attachments to level up your weapons, it's going to take forever and you're going to be grinding forever. Metaphorically and also to an extent quite literally. Because as you level up a weapon more and more, it costs more abs to level it up and thus you're going to be grinding longer. And it's going to take a lot more upgrades in order to do a uh, level up a weapon to max without, you know, diving into gems. You can also earn gems through fishing, but fishing in this game is just terrible. I don't recommend it. Not only is it boring and tedious, but it's it takes a while for you to be rewarded for doing it. And you're also going to spend more money on bait than it would probably cost in you just buying gems instead. Like, I think the pricklies are like 300 or 200 gold from the wise owl and each fish gives you about like 20 uh fish points for catching it in the Mataki village area and um that's just yeah it's just not worth it i think it's 300 fishing points for each gem so that's you know about five fish so that's about 1000 gold 
um, per 100 fishing points, and it just the math doesn't, you know, it, it's just not good on in your on your in your favor. This is one of those games where, actually, a lot of games feel this way to me at least, but where they like shoehorn in a fishing mini game just because you gotta have a fishing mini game. It's like a games that always put in uh, gambling mini games or like a casino of some kind. You just gotta have a casino with mini games in it. Pokemon series is guilty of that, if I'm not mistaken. I know they have casinos. I can't remember how many of them have mini games. Like the gold saucer in Final Fantasy VII is uh, something that comes to mind, but that was actually done pretty well. A little bit biased considering the fact that it's my favorite game of all time, but I, I think they did a very good job with the mini games there. Except for the snowboarding mini game, that one. The submarine one is the easiest though. You can complete it in like 10 seconds if you know what you're doing. Same with the actual submarine battle. Also, Dran's Feather, great item for quickening the pace when you're doing these sorts of dungeon grinds. As you can see, I'm ripping around like Mach 10 with the Dran's Feather. shoot at Ruby a lot more because Ruby has uh I think she stays still for longer when she attacks well then Xiao actually I'm positive she stands still for longer so they I guess sense a window of opportunity when she attacks but they don't for uh little cat girl here like see it'll this guy will never attack me but I'm using her and I don't I don't my that's my only guess for the for the difference is because she attacks quicker, uh, faster succession, moves around a lot more, so I assume that's why. Sweet, sweet abs. She's doing about the same damage as Ruby now. Actually, one more hit. Goro will get your battle axe a bit more. My man, Goro. One of my least favorite characters to play in this game. But, as a guide writer, I need to level up all of my characters' weapons for pretty little pictures on my website, and also so I know what I'm talking about. Which is my main reason of doing this location, you know, repeatedly over and over. But anyway, I've showed you basically all I can. It's just going to be me grinding repeatedly over and over, you know, if I continue filming. And there's really no point in dragging it out for multiple videos. Um, in closing, I would say you get, I think it's 192 abs per uh, clear of this floor at 24 abs per kill, if I'm not mistaken. So let me actually do some quick math. Let's see, 24 times 15 is 360, 24 times 9 is 216, so I said 192, so that means there's eight, 8 enemies here, right? 24 times 8, yeah, which makes sense, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yep, so that's right, 192 abs per clear, because there's 8 enemies here, 24 abs per kill. But anyway, that's all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Hopefully it, uh, you know, illuminated where to where to level up abs in the Sun and Moon Temple if you were lucky enough to get a whole bunch of those secret path keys to open up the back floor. But anyway, that's all there is. I will catch you guys around in future Dark Cloud videos. Peace.